today the little title here, here's a big one. Make sure you get this. This is a one you'll use for the rest of your life. Making equal fractions. Okay. And making equal fractions in math is a simple little thing, but it comes from this one little um, thought or process here. If I have the number one, I can make the number one a bazillion indefinite, infinite, whatever amount of times of fractions. For example, 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1, is it not? Yep. Two, cut a pizza into two pieces, you have two of them, you have a whole pizza, right? Another fraction that equals 1 is 3 over 3, or 4 over 4, or 8 over 8, or 12 over 12. All of these fractions are equal to 1, right? Are you with me? Yep. Okay. Now, what happens anytime I multiply something by 1? Let's say I have 8 times 1. Anytime you multiply it, it's actually a property of math. It's a multiplication of one property, it's probably called the identity property, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. What happens anytime you multiply something by 1? It's that number. Caitlin? It's that number. It stays the same, right? Now, that's true whether it's a number like this, a whole number, or a fraction. 3 eighths times 1 is going to give me, I know it's a hard three one eights. here, 3 eighths, right? Well, here is where you can make the what we call the deductive leap. Instead of taking 3 eighths times 1, I'm going to take 3 eighths times any of these things that is the same as 1. Let's just say it's 8 eighths. 3 eighths times 8 eighths. If I multiply that out, what do I get? 24 over 64. This fraction, because I multiplied it by 1, means the same exact thing as 3 eighths. Okay, there are times when I'm going to want to change a fraction into, it's like expanding, making it bigger numbers. Occasionally, we'll, we'll need to do that sometime here. Okay, but if you multiply a fraction times something that's the same as 1, you get, if I ate 24 64 of a pizza, it's the same thing as eating 3 eighths of it. Usually, we always use this one. Well, here, let me show you. Let's do 3 eighths. I can make a bazillion different fractions equal to 3 eighths because I can multiply 3 eighths by 2 over 2, right? Because that's the same as 1. What is that? 6 16 right? I can multiply 3 eighths by a fraction that's the same as 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 8 times 3 is 24. These are all equal fractions. I can multiply 3 eighths by 4 over 4. What is 4 over 4? 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 times 8 is 32. All of these fractions are exactly the same. They mean the same amount. They're just using bigger numbers to describe them. Now, why, do you ask, do we need to do that? Because the book is going to do this for you. And here's your example problem. If you have 5 over 6, and you want to know another fraction that equals, uh, that's equal to it that has 36 as a bottom number, 5 over 6 equals what number over 36? What you have to do is think this. You have to say, okay, well, what did I multiply the bottom number by to get 36, Maggie? I multiplied this by 6. Well, if I multiply the bottom by 6, I need to multiply the top by 6 because that makes it a fraction equal to 1. And the top number is 30, and 30 over 36 is the same as 5, 6. And that's what they're going to ask you to do. But you need, you need to know the reason why that works. It's because you're multiplying by the same thing as 1, and any time you multiply 1, it doesn't change. So when you see a problem like that, um, for example, 2 thirds equals what number over 15? Guess what I need for you to do? First of all, you need to write the problem down. Second, what am I going to ask you to do? Sammy? Um, come on, come on, come on. What do you think I'm going to ask you to do? Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to ask you to do this, to draw an arrow from the 3 to the 15 and put times what? 3 times what is 15? 
5, and then do the same thing with the top. 2 times 5 is 10. Times 10. 10. And this is the top number that we're looking for, but it's 10, 15. And it doesn't matter whether you're missing the top or the bottom. For example, if I have 5 eighths equals 25 over what number? You still do the same exact thing. How do I go from 5 to 25? Five. Multiply by 5. So for the bottom, I have to multiply by 5 as well. And I get 40. Cabron? What if it's like. Um... If it does, they won't give you ones that don't work out. If that's what you're asking. So Not right now, they won't. Later on, that's a little higher level than we can really match. Well, it's not even improper. It's some other stuff there. Don't worry about it. They will always work out. Always. Okay. Was that what you were going to ask? Yeah, kind of. Okay. They will also ask you this. Let's put a little question mark and a question mark here. They'll say one fifth times what fraction gives you your 20 over 100, and what would you write for that, do you suppose? What would you multiply one fifth by to get 20 over 100? What numbers would go in this fraction here? Yeah, you would put 20 there and 20 there. And 1 times 20 is 20, and 5 times 20 is 100. Isn't that just 1 though? It's 20, yeah. 20 and 60. It is just 1. Congratulations. All right, one last one. Write down this example problem here. Write a fraction equal to one-half, because this I see people have trouble with all the time. Write a fraction equal to one-half. Write a fraction equal to one-half that has a denominator of six. Has a denominator of six. Then write a fraction equal to one third. Then write a fraction equal to one third that has a denominator that has a denominator of six. Then, what is the sum of the two fractions? An actual question they will ask you on your assignment right here. Now, quite often, all those words seem like they throw people into some sort of a tizzy, but you just got to take it one step at a time, do one part at a time. The first thing it asks you to do is to write a fraction equal to one half that has a denominator of six. In other words, this. Write a fraction equal to one half that has a denominator of six. That's all they're asking you to do. One half equal fraction that has a bottom number of six, in which case, Kaylin, it is? Three six. Right, you multiply both top and bottom by three, so you get three six. Then, write a fraction equal to one third that has a denominator of six. Same thing with one third, a denominator of six, in which case that would be, Alex? Um. Multiply by what? Uh, two. So two. Two, six. So now I've got my two new fractions. It says what is the sum of those two fractions? If you have three, six, and add two, six to it, you get five, six. So if you take it apart piece by piece, then you end up with it not being so bad. But if you look at it as a whole big picture, then it gets to be a little 